Good morning and welcome. You are here with Bright Lights and our third winter flip side session this week. Today we're going to learn about Spanish holiday legends and do some fun activities. My name is Renee and I'm joined by my friends Miss Lori and Miss Megan. Before we begin, I just want to share a few reminders with you. First, we're using a webinar format for the session, which means that we can't see or hear you. However, when you have a question or you want to respond, you can use the chat feature at the bottom of the screen, or you can also use the Q&A function. Just type in your question or your response, and uh, one of us will see it and share that with the teacher or respond. Remember, you're only able to chat with the teachers. We are also recording this session and it will be available on our YouTube channel. If you want to watch it again with a friend, um, you can go to our webpage brightlights.org to find um, to find the channel and other information. Finally, we ask that at the end you complete a survey that uh, will let us know what you thought about this presentation. You can use a QR code that you'll find on the slide at the end. If mom or dad or another adult hold their phone up to it, it will activate the survey. Or you just wait until you get an email from us thanking you for attending and then click on the link there and complete the survey. We would love to hear your comments. And with that, I'm gonna turn things over to Miss Megan so that we can hear where we are going and what we are doing. Good morning, Megan. Good morning, Lori. Buenos dias. Hola. Hola, Prof Okander. Me llamo Senora O y estoy emocionada estar aquí contigo hoy. Y tenemos mi amiga Senora Lori. My name is Senora O and I am so excited to be here with you today and with my friend Miss Lori. Hola Lori. Hola. Buenos dias. Hey Lori, I'm going to tell you something silly that I like to tell my Spanish students. So I am Senora O. That means Mrs. O. My last name is Ocander, so Senora Ocander is a lot to say. So we say Senora O. And you are Senora Lori. Senora means Mrs. Now in Spanish, there's this little wavy line that goes over some of the ends called an enye. 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 Yeah. And it makes a real, it's not a normal in sound, like a n, n, no. It's a nya, nya. So I tell yeah. the students, so all of you who are out there now, this is the only time you get to be sassy today. You get to go nya, 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 nya. And that's how we say senora or España. Yeah, you get to be sassy with your Yeah. <laughs> so um, let me go to my share screen here and we're gonna pull up our map and see where we're going today. And I've got this over. All right, friends. Ooh. Oh, is it pulling up? There it is. Yeah. There it okay. goes. All right, friends. So today we are traveling to Mexico. And you can see the star here. That is Lincoln, Nebraska. And so first we're going to go to Mexico. And then we're going to pop on over to España, to Spain. And we're actually going to visit a really particular part of Spain in the northeast corner called Catalan, Catalonia. But we're going to start here in Mexico. And I know with Miss Lori um, and with the, some of the Japanese traditions, we've been talking a lot about New Year's, but we're actually going to kind of go back in time and talk about some Christmas traditions and legends found in Mexico and Spain. So before we get started, I want to make sure everyone with us knows a little bit about Mexico, because Mexico is just to the south. Um, it's still a part of North America. Um, and the primary language there is Spanish. Um, Spanish is actually the third most widely spoken language in the world. It follows Chinese and English. So learning any foreign language is so good for our brains. So good. We build these synapses in our brains that help us connect um, all sorts of different languages and words. And it e can even help us in math and music because of the patterns of language. 
but knowing Spanish can actually be really beneficial as if it's the third most spoken language in the world, you're likely to come across somebody who speaks Spanish in your lifetime. Um, Mexico actually has a really rich um, culture and heritage as um, its native people were Mayan. And then it was colonized by Spain. So there's a lot of rich Spanish culture there as well. Um, it's also a land of extremes. It has really high mountains, deep canyons, there's deserts, there's rainforests, there's beaches. It's just a really, really beautiful country and very diverse. Um, and then some other celebrations that you may have heard of in Mexico are Cinco de Mayo and El Dia de los Muertos. And Cinco de Mayo is often thought of as Mexicans, Mexico's Independence Day, but it's actually not. It actually celebrates the Battle of El Pueblo and Mexico's win um, at the Battle of Pueblo. And El Dia de los Muertos is actually one of my absolute favorite, favorite, favorite holidays. Um, it is November 1st, the Day of the Dead, El Dia de los Muertos, and you actually get to celebrate those in your family who have passed away and remember them with by making their favorite foods and telling stories, looking at old photos. Um, it's just a beautiful, beautiful holiday. So now that we know some more about Mexico, we're going to go into what is a legend. And here in the chat, if you guys know some legends in particular, um, I would love to hear what you think is a legend. Um, a legend is a traditional tale or story handed down from earlier times and is believed to have a historical basis. So, Lori, I don't know if you can think of any legends, um, but one might be <laughs> the sword and the stone, King Arthur. Yeah. Yeah, that's a Disney movie, but it's also um, a very, very popular tale. It's been turned into movies. It's a story that's been passed down for ages. Um, we also have Paul Bunyan, which you may have learned about in school. The Loch Ness Monster. Yeah, have you heard that one, Laurie? I have. I have to say, we were taught that one in school, and um, I've always thought of that as a legend and yeah. um and, Paul and his he has an ox named babe i think yes. yeah paul bunyan that's right and i like the loch ness monster people call her nessie yeah and we've got some some uh, great uh, great things coming in on the chat it sounds like someone had said um johnny appleseed and yeah. chupacabra yeah, yeah chupacabra so Mm hmm Great legends. Another one I was thinking, uh, what's the horseman with no head? Um, the headless <laughs> horseman. I think. <laughs> yes. I don't know too much about that one. Is that like a Halloween one, like out on the east? It the is. East? It's it's uh, east coast. It's a um, uh, Sleepy Hollow, I think, is the area. Oh, someone was saying Bigfoot. Yeah. Nice yeah, those are good ones. Yeah, so usually a legend is, it's a story that you may have heard and it sounds kind of fantastical, maybe a little crazy, a little weird or wild, but it has some base in truth. So somewhere down the line, even in your family, maybe there's some legends in your family. Maybe you have a great, great grandma who was known for baking pies and there's a story that she made 200 pies in one day and that's the legend. So we can have family legends as well. Robin Hood is another example of a legend. Steal from the rich and give to the poor. That's Odysseus. a good example. I like that one. Yeah, Robin Hood. And Odysseus, for the older friends that are joining us, may have learned about him um, in Greek and Roman mythology. Yeah. So I can't see the chat. I was trying to pull that up. Oh, no, I can't. Oh, we have... So so Connor was saying food. maybe dragons. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Connor says he has a grandma that made 300 cookies in one day. That seems pretty legendary to me. I don't like to bake. That's I can pull out a dozen cookies maybe every few months. That's that's impressive. 
That's a lot of cookies. Uh, yeah, unicorn. Oh, unicorn. yeah. Legends, friends. Very good. Johnny Appleseed. I'm trying to scroll through and see if there's any more. The Lost Continent, Greater, and I don't know, and Rai. I don't know that Airdale. one. Is that Airedale? I'll have to look that one up. I'm going to write that one down and look that one up. Sure. I'm yeah. not. I've never heard of that one, and I would like to learn more about that. The wood horse, like the Trojan horse, Kendra. I wonder if that's what she's referring to. Is Mulan a legend? Yep, Mulan is a great. Yep, Atlantis. Very good, friends. Yeah, you guys know a lot about legends. All right, so if you downloaded um, some of the materials for today, you might have this sheet in front of you. And if you don't, that's okay too. Um, we're just going to review some of these um, Spanish words before we get into our the legend that I'm going to read to you from Mexico. Ah, La Llorona. Very good. Yeah, these are all very good. Bermuda Triangle. Okay, so the first word is casita. Casita. And a lot of you may have heard the word casa before. Casa means house. And in Spanish, if you add the I-T-A, the ita or the ito at the end, you can actually make it mean little. So this actually means little house. Um, Casita. Yeah. One of my favorite ita words is abuelita. Abuela means grandmother. Abuelita means little grandmother. Abuelita is more of a, it's a term of endearment. Oh. Add an ita or an ito, it's really a term of endearment. Um, kind of a nickname, a lovey name. A la Navidad, a lot of you may have heard this word. Christmas, Feliz la Navidad. Navidad. Yeah, Navidad. Mm -hmm. Buenos dias, good morning. Mi padre, my father. Mm -hmm. And if you have this sheet in front of you and you want to be filling this out, that is great. If you need me to slow down, I'll keep it up for a little bit and review them too. Uh, mi niña, and there's the enye, the nya, 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 nya on the word niña. So that is a separate letter in the Spanish alphabet. You can see the first N in niña does not have an enye, so that is just an N. The second N as the ñ, so that is the ñ. So those are two separate letters in the Spanish alphabet. That means ña. Ña. I have a hard time doing that ñ. 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 You have to practice the. It, it helps if you put your hands up and go ñ ñ ñ ñ ñ. Oh, oh. Yep. Really okay, helps. Let me try that. Ña, 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 ña. Yeah, that yeah. helped. It helps, right? It's a really good way to learn that sound. The ñ ña, ña, ña. Uh, all right, so casita, little house, la Navidad, Christmas, buenos dias, good morning, mi padre, father, mi niña, my daughter, si, that means yes, that's a good one, I bet almost everyone knows that one, and the whole theme of our time in Mexico is la flor de noche buena, which is a poinsettia flower, um, Literally translated, the flor de noche buena means the flower of Christmas Eve or the flower of the good night. Noche buena is how um, the Spanish say Christmas Eve. But the flor de noche buena is our poinsettia flower. All right, so we are actually going to read the legend of the poinsettia. And it's a story of a little girl in Mexico. And there's a poinsettia flower. And we see poinsettias all over the place at Christmas time. And so this is the legend of how the poinsettia came to be. So here we go. Lucida lived in a small village high up in the mountains of Mexico. Pull my camera a little closer with her mama, her papa, and her younger brother and sister, Paco and Lupe. Papa worked in the fields with their burro, Pepito. Every evening, Lucida fed Pepito, gave him fresh water, and filled his stall with clean straw. At home, Lucida helped mama clean their casita, their little house, and pat out the tortillas for their meals. 
She took care of Paco and Lupe, and each evening they went to the front gate and set up fresh candles. Every day was not work. On Sundays, the family went to San Gabriel in the square where Padre Alvarez said mass. And all through the years, there were fiestas and holidays and processions. The processions at Christmas time in Mexico are called, are called posadas. Posadas. And the posadas wind through the village and they always end at San Gabriel. One day, close to Christmas, La Navidad, Padre Alvarez came to their casita. Ah, Senor Martinez, buenos dias, good day, Padre Alvarez said. I'm here to ask you a blanket for the Christmas procession. We have used the same one for so many years that it is almost worn out. Because your weaving is so fine, I have come to ask if you would make a new one. Mi padre, Lucida's mother said, I would be honored and Lucida will help me. On Saturday, Lucida and Mama went to the market to buy the wool for the blanket. They chose the finest yarn they could find during the market. At home, Lucida helped Mama dye the wool the colors of the rainbow. Those colors will shine throughout, Papa said, as he watched Lucida Mama string the yarn on the loom. So she's gonna weave on the loom. The pictures in this book are so beautiful. I love this book, yeah. I like how in, in the backgrounds too, you can see so much of the culture of Mexico too. As Christmas mm -hmm. got closer, everyone in the village was busy. All the mamas were making gifts to place in the manger. The papas worked together putting up the manger scene in San Gabriel. Lucida and the other children went to the church to sing for singing practice for the procession where everyone would walk to San Gabriel singing and carrying candles. Once inside, Papa Padre Alvarez would lay baby Jesus in the manger and the villagers would go up and place gifts around it. Our gift will be a blanket, Lucida told her friend. I'm helping Mama weave it. One afternoon, a few days before Christmas Eve, Lucida and the children were singing when Senora Gomez came hurrying in. Lucida, you must come home. Your Mama is sick and your Papa has taken her down to the town to see the doctor. You must take care of your brother and sister until your Papa returns tonight. Lucida was frightened. Mama had never been sick before. When she got home, Paco and Lupe were crying. They were frightened too. Lucida tried to comfort them. She made some food and sat down to wait for Papa. That evening, Papa came in looking tired and worried. He drew Lucida close and said, Lucida, mi niña, your mama is ill. Your aunt, Tia Carmen, will take care of mama until she is well, but I must go back and stay with mama until I can bring her home, but it won't be until after Christmas. Senora Gomez will come take care of you, Paco and Lupe, while I am gone, and she will come for you tomorrow. The next afternoon, Lucida overheard two women talking. Lucida's mama is ill. She won't be able to finish the blanket in time. Isn't it a shame? See, si, the other woman said, we are all so disappointed. Padre Alvarez will have to use the old worn out one. When Lucida went home to feed Pepito, and get clothes for Paco, Lupe, and herself, she looked at the unfinished blanket on the loom. Perhaps I can finish it, she thought. But when she sat down and tried to weave, the yarn got tangled. The more she tried to untangle it, the worse it got. It was no use. She could never finish it by herself. Oh. Yeah, it kind of becomes a tangled mess here. She took the unfinished blanket to Senora Gomez. Oh, Lucida, it is so tangled. There isn't time for me to fix it, Senora Gomez told her. Tomorrow is Christmas Eve. Lucida started to cry. It was her fault the blanket was ruined. Her family wouldn't have a gift. Don't worry, Lucida, we will all go to the procession together. Lucida didn't say anything, but in her heart, she felt she had ruined Christmas. Oh, I feel bad for her. Really sad, I know. Come, Paco, come, Lupe. It's time to go to the procession, Senor Gomez called on Christmas Eve. 
Where is Lucida? She was nowhere to be found. Lucida was hiding. From the shadows, Lucida watched everyone gather for the procession. The candles were lit, the singing began, and the villagers walked to San Gabriel, carrying gifts. Lucida walked along in the darkness and watched the procession go in, followed by Padre Alvarez. Little girl, are you Lucida? An old woman stood in the shadows nearby. See, si, Lucida answered, wondering who she was. I have a message for you. Your mama is going to be fine and your papa will bring her home soon, so you don't have to worry. Go now into the church and celebrate Christmas with the others. Paco and Lupe are waiting for you. I can't, Lucida told her. I don't have a gift. Mama and I were weaving the beautiful blanket and I couldn't finish it. I tried, but it only got tangled up. Ah, Lucida, any gift is beautiful because it is given. The old woman told her, whatever you give will be loved because it comes from you. But what can I give now, Lucida said, looking around. A patch of tall green weeds stood in a tangle nearby. Lucida rushed over and picked an armful. Do you think these will be all right? Lucida turned to ask the old woman, but she was gone. Lucida walked into the church. It was blazing with candlelight and the children were singing as she walked quietly down the aisle with a bundle of green weeds in her arms. What is Lucida carrying? A woman whispered. Why is she bringing weeds in? Another murmured. Lucida reached the manger, placed the green weeds around the stable and then lowered her head. A hush fell over the church and voices began to whisper, look, look at the weeds. Lucida opened her eyes and looked up. Each weed was tipped with a flaming red star. The manger glowed and shimmered as if lit by hundreds of candles. When everyone went outside, all the clumps of tall green weeds throughout the town were shining with red stars. Lucida's simple gift, gift had indeed become beautiful. And every Christmas to this day, the red star shines on top of green branches in Mexico. People call the plant La Flor de Nochebuena, the flower of the holy night or Christmas Eve, the poinsettia. So that is. Oh, I love that. That was, that was going to happen. I thought something was going to happen with the blanket. No, yeah, she got it. It's almost like a new blanket. Like the, the flowers kind of became the blanket. Right. Right. Oh, I, that's not what I was expecting. I love it. <laughs> I like it too. So friends, before we get into our craft, um, I'm gonna share my screen one more time. And we have, ah, here it is. Sorry, that takes a little time. So there's our words. Uh, if you did hear casita, la Navidad, buenos dias, mi padre, mi niña, si, y la, la flor de noche buena. And we move to the next slide? Here we go. All right. So we're just going to kind of go through some of the Mexican culture that we found in the book. And if you have this sheet printed out, you can fill in like the little cloud bubbles. If not, no big deal. Uh, maybe you saw something in the book too that um, I'm not going to put on this list. So if you want to put that in the chat as well, but we're just looking at how the legend of the poinsettia might relate to the values and beliefs of the culture. So what are some of the examples of Mexican culture we found in the story? Um, attending mass at Christmas. Many of us mm -hmm. might attend church at Christmas time as well. So they attended mass. There were gifts. Yeah, gifts, definitely. And Christmas fiestas, the parties. Yeah, there's lots mm -hmm. of parties that have presents. Outdoor markets is a very large part of um, Mexican culture. Oh, one of our friends, Sarah, oh. said food. Yes, yes, all the food. Exactly. Weaving blankets by hand. The Christmas Eve procession, Las Posadas. La Flor de Nochebuena. I'm curious too if any of our friends have poinsettias in their house at Christmas time. Do you, Lori? Do you put up a, a poinsettia? I usually do, yeah. And candles, the candles, that's something that we put up a lot of yeah. during Christmas. 
candles. Oh. I'm making tortillas by hand. So that kind of goes along with the food. Let's see. I'm going to try to pull up the chat and see if friends making tacos, yeah. burritos, candles. Yeah. I, I think I shared with you um, that I had spent one Christmas in Mexico just with a friend and we, um, everyone, the town pretty much became quiet about noon on Christmas Eve because everyone was rushing home from the markets to get ready for their celebrations. Yeah. And, uh, and it was so neat, but they did the Feast of the Seven Fishes. Mm, yes. Yep. And so then they also had tamales, but I think I told you my favorite part is I was walking in the streets of the village that night through neighborhood there were families that were um, that had uh, the pin the pinatas. I know that word, uh, pinatas, and were um, the all of the neighborhood would come and celebrate with a pinata. And I think maybe our friends have had pinatas at their birthday party, perhaps. Yes, they have, and that pinata has an enye sound in it too. That nya nya nya. Oh, we're all gonna be nyata. really. I had nya nya nyas, aren't we? Pinata. Yeah. Pinata. Awesome. All right, friends. Well, if you downloaded um, some of the resources, then you will have these guys. So we're going to make our own poinsettia. Um, and I've got a pre-made one here. I haven't glued it together yet. So there's three different parts. You've got your leaves, then you've got your middle layer and your bottom layer of the red poinsettia star. And some of you may have printed them out on green and red paper. I did not. So um, I just colored them with markers and crayons. And what I need to do is glue them together. Um, so I'm gonna glue. Ms. Megan, there are, are there four pieces to each flower? Yes, so there's three sheets, but there's two leaves on the one sheet. And then the yes. smaller flower and the bigger flower. Yeah. So, and I think some of our friends, like me, didn't don't have all their materials together. Um, but you can hang out and just this won't take long, and then you can just wait till the next activity. So you don't have to make the poinsettias right now with everyone, uh, but you can certainly do them later or uh, just follow along. Yeah, and this is something I was thinking how pretty these would be even to like tape on your window right now for people to see as they oh, walk. Yeah. Um, and the, the pattern just has it solid red, but I like to put the little, I put some yellow and orange um, in there for the center of it. You could put glitter in there if your parents Ooh. were. I'm not a glitter fan at my house. I should have brought some. Here. Oh, I like glitter. I could have put glitter in the office for us. Oh, I put glue on the wrong part of my flower, on part of my leaf. That was silly. That's okay. That's something I would do. Yeah. And then I'm just gonna. You know what would really fix that up though is. Is what some glitter? Oh, I think Miss Lori froze on us. I bet she was gonna tell me to use some glitter though. I might put this other. Oh my gosh, I did it again. Yep. Glitter, I think more, more glitter, more glitter. More glitter. I'm not paying attention and I put the glue on the wrong side again. <laughs> oh, Megan, I, I am so, it's, it's hard for me to think reverse sometimes, so it's yeah. okay. Oh my goodness, oh, look how cute that is. Yeah, you could punch a hole in it and hang it. Um, or like I said, I know it's a very Christmassy thing and Christmas has passed, but these would be really pretty if you haven't put away your Christmas decorations yet. Hang them from a tree. You could make an ornament out of it or I don't know, tape them on your windows. Make a whole bunch of them. I, I like the idea of them on the window, especially with all the snow we have in, in Nebraska right now. Uh, it really show up pretty out a window. Yeah. So I'm a fan. There we go. So that is our poinsettia. All right, friends, we are going to take a movement break. Yay. I know. So I don't have a video for my movement break. The way when I teach Spanish, and I think there's some friends in here who have been in my Spanish classes, they know how I do movement breaks. So we all have to get up. I'm going to move my chair out of the way. 
And we are going to learn some Spanish words while we move. Actually, I'm going to keep my chair off to the side here. Just going to make sure I don't knock it over. So as I say a Spanish word, we're going to do the action. And I'm not going to tell you what the Spanish words mean. We're just going to learn them by doing. OK, so the best way to learn a new language. Are you ready? I'm ready. Levántate. Siéntate. Oh, oh yep, you guys did it. Levántate. Siéntate. Levántate. Oh, my goodness. Siéntate. Levántate. Levántate. Oh, okay, we're gonna do a new one. Are we ready, friends? Salta. Yes. Salta, salta, salta. You can salta crazy. Salta. Da -da -da. I need to stop. Da -da -da. Salta. Da -da -da. Siéntate. Levántate. Siéntate. Levántate. I'm realizing you can't see my face very well. Siéntate. Levántate. Salta. Da -da. Baila. Oh, I like that part. Like the baila. Baila, baila, baila. Ba -da, -da. da la vuelta. Oh. Oh, I'm getting dizzy. Da la vuelta. Oh. Da -da -da. Salta. Salta. Baila. That's my favorite. Like baila. Yeah. My, my hair went crazy all that dancing. Parada. Marcha. Oh. Cool, yeah. There we go. There we go. Marcha. Marcha. Parada. Siéntate. Levántate. Siéntate. Levántate. Oh, here's a fun one. We'll do it at siéntate. So siéntate. Lengua. 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 Esta tu lengua. Your tongue. Lengua. Cabeza. 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 You can abra los ojos, cierren los ojos. Abran. Oh. Abra. Cierren. Abran. Cierren. Abran. Cierren. Muy bien. Um, oh, muestres manos. 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 Abran. Cierren. Abran. Cierren. Abran. Cierren. Abran. Cierren. Abran. Aplauda. 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 Okay, vamos a hacer un más bastante loco, okay? We're gonna do one more a little crazy. Levántate. Okay. I'm gonna make sure we, I can be seen. Salta. Lengua. Da la vuelta. Parada, there we go. Okay. <laughs> oh, that was good. Ooh, I'm a little sweaty now. A little hot. Good. Okay, friends. Let's see. <laughs> Let's go to my screen share here. All right. Oh. Some of the words we learned were siéntate, sit down, levántate, stand up, salta, jump, baila, dance, da la vuelta, turn around, marcha, march. Lengua was your tongue. Cabeza was your head. Ojos, your eyes. And then I think I threw in manos in there. Those are your hands. Oh, I see friends in chat. Let's see. Can we color, asking color, about color we want? Absolutely. Oh, I see Miss Renee said yes. And some uh, poinsettias are white. Yeah. So, yeah. And they're Pink ones and pink streaky ones. Mm -hmm. And then some you can even buy a poinsettia that has some glitter already on it. Oh, seriously? Oh, yeah. See, I would not be allowed in my house. <laughs> All right, friends. So we, 
Oh, and now we're headed over to Spain, España, another Inye word, España. Spain is in España. Yeah. And again, the majority of the country speaks Spanish, but here we go. So we see Spain is on the continent of Europe. It's on the southwestern tip of Europe on the Iberian Peninsula. The main language is Spanish. Spain is divided into regions though, and they have their own unique traditions and cultures. Um, so we are actually going to visit Catalonia over here in this far northeast corner. Lori, can you see, is my cursor moving around on Catalonia there? Um, no, but I can see it on the, on the okay. slide. Okay. Uh, yeah. Move my cursor on the slide. I wasn't sure if that was visible or not. So this far like reddish color here is Catalonia and they speak Catalan. They speak Spanish as well. And the capital city of Barcelona is found there in Catalan. So we're going to talk a so, little. Yes, go ahead. Ms. We had Sorry. a quick question. Yeah. Uh, Spain is the original birthplace of the Spanish language. Is that correct? Correct. That is correct. So when Spain, you know, back in like the 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th centuries, and they were colonizing areas like Mexico in South America, Central America, parts of North America, they brought over their culture, their language. So that's why Mexico is such a mixture of native culture and Spanish culture kind of mix. And that's how you get these really cool holidays and traditions like El Dia de los Muertos. Also, it's a mixture of these different cultures coming together. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Okay, so what is a tradition? Um, transmission of customs or beliefs from generation to generation. Traditions can serve to unite family and community through the transfer of knowledge and create a sense of belonging and common experience. So if you guys want to start thinking about and possibly putting in the chat, maybe some of your family traditions, especially around the holidays, but it doesn't have to be a holiday tradition. You might have a tradition at another time of the year, but you might make a special family recipe. Maybe your family gets their pictures taken every fall. You drive around to see Christmas lights. You have a special birthday meal or a gift, or some people eat their birthday cake on a special plate. Um, Elf on the shelf, watching a family movie. So my family's tradition now is we love Thanksgiving and we don't allow any Christmas music or Christmas decorating until Thanksgiving is over. So what we decided to do is we eat our meal, our Thanksgiving meal, and we clean it up as fast as we can. And then we all get Christmas pajamas and they're all matchy matchy. And we put on the movie Elf with Will Ferrell and we wear Christmas pajamas and we watch the movie Elf and we decorate for Christmas. Doesn't matter oh, what I like that. it is, but we have to finish Thanksgiving before we can move on to Christmas. And we like to do it very quickly because we're so excited for Christmas at that point. So. That's kind of become our family tradition. Oh, there's some great uh, traditions in the chat. Yeah. You want to read it? Christmas lights. Connor says Christmas lights. Claire says sledding, nice. which I like that. Alex says elf on the shelf. Uh, one of our traditions in um, my husband's family is that my mother-in-law makes um, cannelloni. So she makes the pasta sheets and the filling and the two sauces, and it's quite... Mm -hmm. So that's a family tradition of, of my husband's family. Oh, and I see. Oh, it just went away. Someone said they did. Um, I they, see. They were lighting candles for Hanukkah. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. Pizza on Saturdays, going to the lake. Yeah, these are great traditions. Lots of them. In my oh, no, someone said, does the word Espanol mean Spanish? Yes, it does. Yeah, great question. Great question. All right, let's go back. Um, okay, so we're gonna talk about some traditions in Spain in particular. 
Um, so in more modern times, Papa Noel or Santa has been the main gift giver. But in a moment, we're going to talk about a tradition in Catalan that kind of precedes Papa Noel, precedes Santa, and still goes very strong um, in Spain today. So he travels through and leaves presents for children to open on Christmas Eve, but it has not always been the case. Um, and sometimes there's more native gift givers in certain regions of Spain. So the Basque Mountains, they have Alencero, who's a coal vendor and gives gifts to good children, who gives gifts to the good children and coal to the misbehaving ones. Other traditions, they have El Gordo, which is a giant lottery takes place on December 22nd. It's the biggest lottery in the world. Um, you can also have Christmas bonfires in Spain. Um, it's an old tradition from Granada where bonfires are lit every December 21st, which is the winter solstice. It's believed, and I don't recommend this, do not do this at home, do, do, they jump over them to prevent um, getting sick. Oh right. my. We are going to now talk to you about my absolute favorite, 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 and Miss Lori knows. Oh, I'm excited for you because I know this is your favorite. It's my favorite. So before we talk about my favorite tradition, I just want to say that some cultures, and we've experienced this, I think, Lori, with your camp on Monday and mm -hmm. the Japanese cultures and origami. All cultures are different, right? And there's things and traditions that right. we do that people from other countries probably think that we're a little crazy or silly for doing, right? Candy at Valentine's yes. Day. Yes, like, absolutely. I don't know. There's just some things that we do that are different. Now, does different mean wrong? No. Does different mean mm -hmm. bad? No. Mm -hmm. Different mean we should laugh and make fun of them? No. No, 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 no. It's an opportunity for us to learn and to grow and to open our minds and to respect other people and other traditions within their culture. With that said, my friends, this is Cagatio. Oh my gosh. I love Cagatio. Mm -hmm. Right? So Cagatio, as you can see, this is a real Cagatio. He is a log. And he has been painted with a little face and he has googly eyes that shake. He has a little, um, mine has like a little Santa hat. Um, they often have like little berets or like a sleeping cap. And then tied to him is this great little stick. He's known by two different names. Okay. The first one is Cagatio. Cagatio. We also have the Tio de Nadal. Same thing just two different names i'm going to pull up my screen so we can learn about cagatio all right in the region of catalan we have tio de nadal or the christmas log he stands on two or sometimes four legs you can see these pictures here he has a face and he wears a red beret children start feeding the log on december 8th and they keep him warm by placing a blanket over him and if they do a good job of taking care of him, Gagatio will poop presents for them on Christmas Day. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's so funny. It's amazing. So what happens is, and some have small logs. There's a log in Barcelona that is larger than the room I'm in right now. I mean, they, some are giant, giant Gagatios. Okay. So every night, a blanket goes over him to keep him nice and warm. And the children put a plate of usually their parents' favorite foods and drinks or the kids' favorite little treats because he needs to eat and drink. Because within our digestive systems, right, when we eat and drink and we grow and we are happy when we eat and drink, and then later on, our digestive systems work Correct. So if his digestive system works properly, you feed him, you give him things to drink, you keep him warm and toasty. Eventually that's going to work its way through Cagatillo's digestive system and he will poop out Christmas presents for you. That is something. 
That, that, that is something. So it is an amazing tradition. It is very, very real. The magic of Gagatio, because I have him. He does, I've had him for many years. He does not work here. It makes me and my children, I have four children, very sad that the magic of Gagatio does not work here in Lincoln, Nebraska. It'll where only, did you he's from Barcelona? You got he's him from, from Barcelona. Yeah, he's from Barcelona. Yep. So what happens is there's a stick and the blankets over him and the children will take the stick and they sing a song and they they bang the log while singing a song because banging him not to hurt him it helps the digestive system it helps him produce the presence um, it is a little different yes <laughs> i don't see who said that and then so they <laughs> sing a lovely little song and then the presents come out. So we are gonna watch, um, I've got two videos for us to watch um, to learn a little bit more about Gagatio. And we're gonna hear the song that's sung. Miss Megan, I'm just gonna remind you as you're sharing, um, you wanna make sure you have optimized your video and your sound. Mm -hmm. So as you share your screen down there, it should say there should be two little uh, buttons you can click. Hey. And it may already, you may already have them clicked. I just thought before we start this, just to, mm -hmm. sorry for interrupting voice. No, that's fine, Renee. Miss Renee. I, I'm not sure what two little buttons you're telling me to put. So when you do share screen, do you have anything at the bottom that gives you an option of which screen to share? So your screen, you can see us and then your screen, your mm -hmm. uh, presentation screen? Yes, ma'am. So in that window toward the bottom, there should be, uh, two little uh, lines of text. One says optimize for video and optimize sound. Okay. No, and, and we may be fine. We could go ahead and just start it. And if kids say they can't hear it, then um, then we will we'll stop. But let's see how it goes. Okay. Oh, now I got to get back into that. I'm sorry. Sorry, guys. I didn't mean to. I just thought so we didn't have people say, what is it saying? Because this is awfully interesting. Boys and girls, as you listen to the video, when Senor O gets it set up, then you can let us know if you can't hear it and then we'll stop it. Okay, now it says, I think I did something with subtitles and I didn't mean to do that. Hear it? Yes. or caga tío, caga de now. So they're singing, um, the, the words come out as poop log, poop log, poop out toron, which is a type of like a nougat chocolate candy in Spain. So basically poop out sweets, poop out good things, do not poop out herrings, they are too salty, poop out the toron, poop out the chocolate. And then you whack him while singing this song because you want the good things, not the salty fish. All right, here's a video of a family. Oh, I just love Cagatio. You guys, he's just my favorite. Here's a video of a family um, actually doing Cagatio, which I thought was a really cool thing to see these little kids and how excited they get. You can see the big blanket on the floor. There's two sticks. Let's watch them. Cagatio, tío, He's so excited. Ah, ya, 
Ai el foc, ai el cara, 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 ai el brut, ai el foc, ai el cara, de foc. L'últim cop ben fort, l'últim cop ben fort. Oh my goodness. I know. He's so excited. So excited. Yeah. You know, what I was thinking about, Miss Megan, is that this year, so many children and families had to maybe change their traditions, things that they normally do for Christmas or other holidays. Yeah. And um, so when people have a chance to get back to their normal traditions, they'll be especially excited to do that. I was thinking about that myself. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I just love it. So Kagetio, he he does sit, I have, I collect um, some Christmas trees. And so he sits amongst my forest of Christmas trees that I collect for decoration. And I love telling the story of Kagetio. So I hope you guys- That was, him. <laughs> that was different, you know, but it, but it's true, Megan. I think that we, just because something's different than what we yeah. do, is it, doesn't make it wrong it just makes it different and i think it opens our minds when we have the chance to learn about other people and how other people celebrate right right and just to learn to to have that knowledge and then to be able to share with other people you know your own traditions and kind of come together and bond over that and just learning about other people too is just the way that we can continue to be kind and respectful and just having friends all the world is just so important so kagatio oh my gosh kagatio okay friends so um if you downloaded the resources we have i don't know why there's so many berets on this sheet of paper but you can make a lot of kagatios um there's 12 and then this sheet has four logs um, again you could print them out on brown paper and red paper if you want um, I did not. Um, what I did was I just printed him out and then I drew my own cagatio face. This is the very mm -hmm. traditional Catalonian face, but you can draw whatever. I mean, you saw in the video how different a lot of the um, the faces are. And every log is different. I mean, this is a real wood log. They really cut down trees and make these guys. So every single cagatio is different. Um, Again, I went with the traditional Catalonian red beret that we're all blue on here, but you can make it any color you want. You can add a design to it. You can glue it however you want on his little head. Um, Nora, are, yes, yes I, we had a we had a question. Does it take overnight for Cagatillo to produce the presents? So, like, how long do you feed the Cagatillo? I love mm. that. You start feeding him on December 8th and you whack him with a stick, he digests his food and produces the presents on the 24th. So it takes about 16 days, a little over two weeks. Perfect. Yes. Great question. So again, Kagatio, you could see the log, you can make a face, you could punch a hole and make an ornament out of him. You could tape him up next to your poinsettia and have a great story to tell your friends who might walk by your window, might want to see Gagatillo. Um, that's all I had for, for you guys, friends. Were there any other questions? Was there, you can make your own, yep. So you can make Gagatillo by printing those. Um, there's some also, uh, if you want like a word search, a Spanish word search and a Feliz Navidad coloring page. So I added some more things in there. If you just want some fun crafts and things to do this afternoon or later this week, then that's all there for you. Miss Megan, um, for tomorrow, since it's New Year's Eve, maybe yeah. we should let everyone know how to say Happy New Year in Spanish too. Oh, I like that. Okay. So in Spanish, you say Prospero Año Nuevo. Prospero Año Nuevo. It translates to prosperous new year. You can also say Feliz Año Nuevo, which means happy new year. But the okay. traditional you say Prospero 
Año Nuevo. Prospero Ano Año Nuevo. Yeah, año has our nya 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 our nya. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm working on the nya nya nya. Just think of it as an N Y A sound. Nya nya nya. Yep. Prospero Año Nuevo, and I will be with you to celebrate New Year's tomorrow. Yes, That's we're great. gonna have a party. We are gonna have a party. Should I dress up for the party? Yeah, you should. You should do whatever you'd like. Ooh, I, maybe, I, you know, if you had something, maybe you had something glittery, that would be nice. Something sparkly. Wear glittery, but not play with the glitter in my house. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna Lori, do you want to tell us a few things that we're going to do tomorrow? Because we're getting ready to oh, wrap yes. up. But tomorrow's an exciting day, boys and girls. Oh. Uh, I am very excited. We are going to um, learn about traditions from all over the world, some, some that we haven't heard about yet, um, from Senegal and from Estonia and other countries. We're going to make some New Year's resolutions and we're gonna make a party hat. Uh, we're gonna, uh, with a black light, we're gonna make some glow in the dark lemonade. Uh, we're gonna make a special pizza, which will be kind of fun. We're gonna make some New Year's Eve uh, slime that has sparkles in it. And we're going to have some fun music, and we will also be uh, dropping the crystal ball. I made a crystal ball out of plastic cups. I can't wait to show it to you, but we are going to have so much fun. We're going to learn how to say Happy New Year in different language, languages from all over the world. So I hope everyone, and, and we're going to start at 1030 Central, and we're, we're going to finish it up right at the other 12 o'clock which is noon perfect all right that is awesome thank you so much Nora O and miss Lori, boys okay, and girls two questions oh, yeah. about to you. i'm so sorry can i answer no, go those? ahead absolutely so um laura asks is it magic is that how he poops out the presents yes and then the next question by claire can i make a real one sure but the magic only works in catalan so like I have a real one and I display him and I tell people stories about Cagatio, but he does not work because the magic only works in Catalonia and Catalan Spain. So perfect. That was excellent. All right. Thank you so much, boys and girls. We hope that we see you again here tomorrow for our New Year's Eve party. As Miss Lori said, remember that we will start at 1030 instead of 10, we will be starting at 1030 tomorrow. And you can download all of the fun um, activities and the lists and supplies at brightlights.org um, so that you can be all ready tomorrow. We're just coming and have fun with us and enjoy. And then you can do the activities later in the day too. Um, remember, we are having in-person camp this summer and we would love to see you face to face. Our registration begins February 27th at 8 a.m. And we have our five weeks of camps with so many fun activities uh, that we will put up on our website in February so you can start planning. Um, and finally, if you or an adult that you're with would take our survey, we would really appreciate it. You can use the QR code uh, to activate that. And you can also look for a um, email to come. Uh, to the email address that registered for this to also fill out a, uh, a survey. So again, have fun, boys and girls. I hope you have a good time sharing these legends and stories with others. And remember that our um, camps this week will be on our YouTube channel, um, which you can find on our um, Facebook and webpage. All right. Have a great day, everybody. We will see you tomorrow at 1030. Bye.